Mythical champions are becoming too frustrating. How is this champion even allowed? Neus the Shadow Thief, this guy. This electrical bird, he looks awesome. I've fought him probably twice in live arena so far, and he's nasty. He just doesn't want to die, and then when, like, it's just, it's just crazy. And yeah, this move right here was pretty, pretty annoying. Uh, the mythical champions that I've been fighting are supremely difficult to deal with, mainly because I just don't know what they do. I've been fighting in live arena, trying to get some practice in. Where did, I fought this one guy who had, a uh, this guy, Omnigrom. Dude, this guy brought in Galathir. I had no idea what he did, uh, what he did. And then I, I, he had this, um, dragon thing. I had no idea what he did. That's not an excuse to losing. Like, I, like, I already know, like, get good. It just takes practice. It's just something that you get used to, etc. I know the whole nine yards. I, I totally can relate to this, basically. I can relate to what he's saying right here. It's becoming frustrating to play this game as free to play or a low spender. Responding to that one sentence, I would tell anybody who's feeling this sentiment, you can avoid areas of the game that you're not happy with. I don't enjoy live arena. In fact, ha halfway through the fight, I, I often just give up. Something happens, I get sheeped or, uh, you know, I make a mistake, it's a skill issue. You could say whatever um, you want and it's probably right, but it's just like, I, I, don't, I don't enjoy live arena all that much. Um, I'm doing it now just because a few more points and I'm gonna have Quintus and I figured, you know, why not um, Why not just finish it out? The other thing that I've noticed is that I'm getting a lot of primal quartz from doing live arena. I had to do it for the Marius missions. I did pull Marius. I thought that was pretty cool. It was fun. I have Marius now, so maybe I can start contending with some other players. I I'm just gonna throw this on auto here, focus down on Arbiter. But for the most part, yeah, I can totally understand that. I mean, I, I went up against a level 73 the other day who just had an entire league, five mythical champions, empowered and everything to um to, to use against me and i was like i don't even know who to ban dude especially because of the mythical champions fact is your average raid pl uh, player now doesn't even have one mythical champion it's frustrating to come across mythical champions in places like live arena or other pvp areas this was another issue that somebody in my comments mentioned they were like uh, i forgot who specifically it was you know, you know make yourself known they were saying like oh um because they integrate pvp and pve together it makes it very difficult for somebody who wants to just strictly be a low spender or a free-to-play player and and play pve trying to avoid pvp when a lot of the pve elements encourage or at least no yeah the word is encourage you to go ahead and do pvp stuff case in point like live arena is part of the marius missions hydro clash is another area of uh, pve PvE or something that used to be PvE, which turned into PvP, right? So now you have to work hard to your best to try to score as high as you can. Uh, I just remind, remind, I got reminded that I needed to use my last key here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that while this is going. For one, I have no idea what they do half the time. Yeah, I have no idea what they do. And because they're so broken, I can't even counter them without having OP champions myself. Me, who doesn't have an OP account or a mythical champions like what do i do against somebody who has a bunch of reds you know what i mean like sure armands but armands is an obvious ban it's not like taurus can compete with a lot of them like i know what the answers are but it's one of those things that are easier said than done like you guys ever played dark souls who's played dark souls or elden ring like who's really played it or Sekudo? who's finished beat those games all right because i have hundreds of hours into all of those games individually cumulatively like thousands 2000 might be in my might be pushing it but definitely somewhere between over a thousand and less than 2000 i was having this conversation with somebody else they were like oh dark souls or like the souls series looks really easy all you have to do is just know what your opponent or what the boss is going to do and then just just dodge it and i'm like yeah it, it's easy for you to to say that and assume that but like when you're in the moment it's not that easy there's a reason why souls games are her heralded as like the toughest of toughest games a game that's not meant for your average player why it has a strong fan base right i was just in a live arena fight and this dude neus shows uh neus the shadow nias the shadow thief literally kept reviving his allies on every turn it was beyond frustrating like how is that even allowed these new mythical champions are so overpowered and convoluted no point in even trying exactly like sometimes in the few fights that i've been in i just throw it on auto and I'm just like, all right, well, whatever happens, happens. And I leave it at that. Now, there are times when when live arena can be really fun. Like if I just have like an awesome and fun champion like Marius, 
or Thor, who just happens to be really fun, or like in the early days when I had Taurus. And I know what you're thinking, like, oh, okay, well, it's fun when you're winning. Yeah, it's fun when I'm winning. It's one of those things where like Live Arena can be really fun if you're competitive, right? If you can compete. But if you're just going up against a stone wall and you're fighting a stone wall, that's when it becomes kind of like, all right, well, what, what's the point? Of, what's the point of trying to roll this boulder up the hill, knowing that it's just going to come back down on me, right? Because there's a difference, right? There's there's a certain point where it becomes less of fun, sport, and competition. Like, oh, I can learn how to counter this person in live arena, or like, I learned last time that I didn't do this in live arena, or you know, in the drafting process, oh, I can understand the psychological components to him choosing arbiter first or him choosing <laughs> quote unquote psychological components to it i see him picking siffy so i'm gonna pick rotos and i'm gonna pick udk like there's that that's a little bit of fun right having actually a fun fight that's fun but when you're going up against somebody who has plus four mythical champions fully empowered well it's kind of like dude you know what i mean it's like when i go up against people who are like level i don't know 60 and it's obvious they don't have good champions or like they're still new. Yeah, sure, it's a free win and I'm, I'm going to take free wins all day. But at the same time, I can kind of see the other person's perspective on the receiving end. Like imagine going up against my account, which really isn't that, you know, amazing. It's just a five year plus account, not knowing who to ban. Do I ban the fully blessed Rodos? Do I... Do I ban uh, Arbiter? Do I ban Armands? Do I ban Taurus? Do I ban Yumiko? You know what I mean? Like, it's not fun going up against somebody like me if you don't have those champions. If if you're stuck with using Genbo and Deacon Armstrong as a speed booster and freaking um, Sill of Drakes in Live Arena, you know what I mean? So that that's the perspective. But I already understand and I can hear what some of you other guys are saying just get good x y and z reasons i already look if you're going to give me those those types of comments i'm just going to give you a thumbs up i already know i've already heard those stories before but i mean like try to view it with this guy's perspective because this is the lament that a lot of players are feeling and obviously don't take reddit as the player base community and, and stick with it or whatnot just you know what i mean but this is not just something that I hear from Reddit. Like this is what I hear about in in the game in the game chat, right? People say this all the time. What is this? Versus Burrito Slay in Arena. He got first. No fair. Pretty stupid. You can't pick someone that they use in Gold Live. Does my head in? Yeah, I need to. I just fought this guy, and he lost. You know what I mean? Like it's it's. I I feel where he's coming from. The gap keeps widening. Those who use mythicals and those who don't or can't. And of course the argument is always like, just spend money, just get lucky or get good or just gear or learn the game. That's easy to say if you've been playing for a while. It's easy to say if you're a spender of any kind, even if you just buy the gem pack. One day I'll get a mythical champ one day. Mikage, she's amazing, she is. I'd say Armand is we uh, uh, weeks. Leagues worse for the state of arena than mythicals. He gets picked 100% of the time in live arena. Pretty much. I feel bad for those who don't have him or are trying to progress. He's ban bait. I'd say people ban Armands over pretty much any mythical. Galathir is his name. I'm going to auto ban him from now on. To prove your point, he's not even ban bait unless the opponent liter literally doesn't have him built. If he has anything above two stars, he is the ban. I banned him twice over two six star mythicals because I had to. Luckily still won those since I have the champs to do it, but I don't have Armands. I basically pick up Armands to soak up the ban. There you go, that's what I do. Pick other powerful champs behind him. Helps you have a juicy soul for him, makes him even a bigger threat. Armands is the only hope for my free-to-play account. It doesn't even matter to me. Live Arena is so cancerous that it does not even exist as far as I'm concerned. It comes down to arena bonuses and suffering through the trash. That I don't even want to. Uh, that I don't even want the bonuses. Uh, and I came out with a video on it. I'm not going to shy away from it. I basically just drop so that I can lose rank and then take the easier fights. When I do feel like being competitive, that's when I stop doing that, and that's when I start letting the harder fights come in. But then that's also where you see me losing a lot because of X, Y, Z reasons. Uh, I basically just suck at PVP. But then sometimes I feel like, okay, well, I feel like learning. It's it's just like when I was placing plat. It took me a while to get. I actually got it on my my second try during the, the tail end of Cupidus Venus stone skin meta. Progressing further on along, I had placed plat uh, multitudes of times after that. I don't really bother anymore because I don't want to stay up late, but like, there's a learning curve to everything. It's the same thing with Live Arena. And then you know, sometimes I get I get the feeling like, hey, I want to learn what it's like to um, be good 
at Live Arena. I'm, I'm curious about that. And now that I'm saying this out loud, well, shit, maybe I should just watch, like, Pop Drock or, or Shiny, right? Those are some PvP gods, right? Are they... Con they're or Cruzian. Cru Cruisen? IPR Dom's account. Like, those guys, I always see them doing Live Arena stuff. I should probably just watch some of them. You know, sometimes I just want to kind of learn for myself. But then I'm in the process of learning, and then I'm like, okay, well, I'm not learning anything. I'm just getting smacked around by either Sheep or Mythical Champions, plus four Empowered Champions, so it's not even a learning curve anymore. It's just me getting shit the fuck on. For starters, in the higher ranks of Live Arena, it's not that uncommon to see people pass on Armands or pick him the 4th or the 5th. Nias would be picked 100% of the time if everybody had him. Until you fight him in a good team, you have no idea how bullshit this champion is. He was in 6 or 7 of the top 10 plat- Oh, I didn't even know that. He was in the 6 or 7 of the top 10 teams in plat reset, while Armands is nowhere to be seen. Armands can actually be countered and beat in a fair by a few fair champions or teams. My best counter to Armands, by the way, is Tormund, if I don't get to ban him. While Nice, you're almost entirely at the mercy of stripping his stone skin and then having a champion with block passives not get sheeped. To back this up, according to the stats on Hell Hades' website, Armands has a pick rate of almost 50%, with a ban rate of 72.5% and a win rate of 15.5%. Nice is a 5.7% pick 12% ban, 13 basically percent ban rate, and a 55.6 win rate. Galathir, 46, Sigfrin, 50, Crixia, 42, Gizmak, 50, 52 for Lazarius. Lazarius. From what I can tell, there isn't another champion that comes close to Nais. Are you saying you'd ban Armands over Nais if they both got picked? If so, I suggest you go read over his skills again and then watch him in action. For a good team. You're missing something if you don't think this is the most busted champion ever released into the game. And then, just for giggles, go and read the kit for Ashnar the Orc Mythic. Nais is designed purely to be the new number one most desired champ for all whales, and Ashnar was designed purely to be mythical pool filler to make it harder to pull a good mythic. There's no reason there is no reason for the kits of mythic champions to vary this much in power. This is a very well said post, I liked it. Well, Armands was a fusion that tons of people have, and Nice is a mythical that like less than 1% of players have. So for all the people in silver and low gold TTA in LA, you never see Nice, but Armands is in every round. There is actually a game outside of the top 1000 players, and it's all about Captain Jack. Anyone that struggles with Armands isn't beating Nice. I ban him every single time too, but now I... I know about Nice. See, but that's the process. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Learning Live Arena. I didn't know I, about Galathir. I didn't know about Nice. But now I do. No fucking shit, Sherlock. There's no reason for legendary kits to vary this much in power, let alone mythics. Lil Bro discovered gunpowder a couple hundred years late. What? What? What's the? What? What is your? What? What is this? What was the poor? What, why did you? What is this? This was unneeded. This was unnecessary. What? What are you talking about? He's just stating an opinion. He didn't discover anything. Why are you being why are you being like that? There's almost 300 legendary champions more than any other tier of champion. There's no way there wouldn't be a big gap between absolute best and absolute worst. There's 20 mythic champions and they're already making ones that would be considered shit tier if they were just legendary. See, at least he didn't address that this guy was being a total fucking donut and he just stuck to the conversation. 7400 live arena points. All I see is people picking Armand's first, banning him, including players from IPR and MAD. Nais is somewhat counterable in LA. You can't just counter Armand's unless you go first and lock out his cooldown. Armand's is useless for classic arena as his AI is basically dumb. True. Armand's needs to be nerfed. Every single ability is too strong. I'm only fighting when I have first pick. Second pick, I'm leaving in the champ phase. Still have a 50% win ratio with this tactic, although only in gold three. Balanced champ. That's actually a good good um, strategy. Like I said, my strategy so far has just been making sure I don't have a good win streak, purposely losing fights. In fact, going back-to-back -back losses drops me so far down that I end up getting a lot of the easy fights. But this is also a good one too, right? Only doing a fight when you have first pick. Remember... If you're just trying to get the job done, it doesn't matter how you get it done, just get it done. Fuck anybody else's opinion like, oh, 
be a real fighter or, 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 or be a real player. No, fuck that shit, dude. Give me my shit and let's get the fuck over with Live Arena. Unless you're the person who actually enjoys Live Arena, then more power to you. Or unless you're like me and you, you just happen to have a feeling one day to be like, yo, I want to learn what it's like to actually play Live Arena, right? There's nothing wrong with that. I respect that. I can get behind that. But other than that, when I was just go trying to finish the missions for Marius, I was just like, fuck this shit, dude. I'm gonna spoof my way down. Uh, I didn't know about this. If you get first, go ahead and fight. If you don't, leave. The counterbalance to the OP nature of a lot of these mythical champions is Polymorph. Champions such as Galathir, Commodus, and Mikage have buff strip skills and also apply devastating debuffs. And Camp or Commodus has the option to just kill your entire team outright, while champs like Gizmak, Alaz, and Lazarius have some powerful debuffs as well that nuke your team quickly. The only way to put fear into a lot of these teams is to farm those essences, put a high polymorph blessing on at least a couple of your LA mainstays, and make sure they are your first or second picks if possible. The first champ with a high polymorph for many free-to-play low spenders is most likely going to be Armand's. But since he will most likely be banned, you're going to need at least one more. Wukong to 6-star Awakening is an excellent option. Since Wukong already excels in so many areas of the game, he's still a terror in LA. At least up to the tiers that most free-to-play low spenders can hope to reach. That's true. Should I change my nuke Wukong to Polymorph? Beyond that, it just depends on what other champions you have and whether you got high awakenings for them. This is unfortunately the reality for a lot of us free-to-play low spenders. Winning in LA against players that improve their roster at a faster pace because of spending will result in your success coming down to a lot more coin flips. Thanks for actually trying to respond, not just saying get good. The troll answer, most of the answers, and I expect an answer like this on, on the YouTube comments, um, just because, you know, that's just how some people are. I, I can re resonate with this. I like it when people actually provide to the conversation, not just complain about the people who are sharing their experiences. I've been playing for three years. Raid has always had pay to win PVP modes. You get to choose whether to compete seriously in top PVP or play the game for free, but you can't do both. Mythicals didn't make it that way, but they doubled the gap. There aren't many legendary teams that don't have a counter, but there are a bunch of mythical champions that are absolutely and utterly stupid like Crixia, Siegfried, Naiz, Commodus, etc. Modern Thinker says, fair enough, but what gap are you concerned with overcoming? You honestly trying to be in the top 100 or even the top 1000? Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a good point. For what? Pride? You struggling to be in a certain tier? Then you should be cheering for a gap to be present. The wider the better. Exactly. The guys who are really competing and really paying to win, you want them to exceed and get into the higher tiers so that people who don't do that are left at the bottom and you just kind of fight amongst yourselves, right? Those that you can't handle are going to be in tiers above you and you'll be in the tiers with your peers. People express concerns about a gap, but they never say what the actual concern with it is. My concern is that people are able to get such insanely OP champions that they're literally impossible to compete with. My initial response to that is don't compete. Take the L, walk away. You're not going to compete with them, even if you wanted to. Be happy. It's a fucking video game, dude. Thanks for the additional comment. I can appreciate that, but I feel like it's a double-edged sword. As a non-spender, I appreciate that there are some very powerful champions out there, while highly unlikely I'm ever going to get them. Mythicals, same. There's still a chance I will, even from one single primal shard. That's true. If I was ever so lucky, I know that I'd have a lot of fun with this, such a champ. I don't trouble myself playing against people similar to me who have that luck and have an incredible champ i can usually hold my own against them in terms of gear other champs and tactics win some lose some some i'm fine with that don't trouble myself against the spenders who have multiple mythicals i couldn't beat those players when they had sippy rotos duchess and kandrophons taurus marishkas so i'm not going to beat their mythicals i really don't see what the problem with the with the gap is big or small it's still a gap i can't overcome so i don't try take the l look for a better matched fight next time Sometimes I get a good fight, sometimes I smoke my enemy, sometimes they smoke me, I don't fret it. There you go, Modern Thinker, big shout out to you. I like that, I like that. They all have counters though. Dude, no, no they fucking don't. If you don't know what a champion does, it's entirely on you. We can see their kits, we can all learn what they do. The same thing happens with legendaries, you don't actually know what you do until you go out of your way to learn about them or deal with them enough times. Exactly. This guy needs to kill someone to revive someone. I find that far less annoying than Mariska reviving everybody when she dies, and then having another reviver revive Mariska. And then there's a banning. Why didn't you ban this guy if he's a problem for your team? 
Well, probably because he didn't know. And probably because he didn't know that he was going to be such a problem. Well, I mean, I, I don't remember. I don't remember what the OP was. And if you don't know he's a problem for your team, then isn't that your fault? Yes and no. You can't blame somebody or be mad at them for not knowing something if they just fucking didn't know. You don't know what you don't know until you know that that's what you needed to know. That's life. That's learning. Dude, even CCs like Hell Hades, where it's his job to know about each champion, have complained about not knowing what they do half the time. They release champions almost every few weeks at this point when I don't have access to many of them. It's just like going to the index to read every random champion's skill. I have a job. And this is a good point, right? It's a job for me to have to go into the index and sit there and, and learn everybody's skills, especially when they're releasing champions all the damn time. Not everybody's a walking encyclopedia who can remember what all the mythicals do in live arena. You can't go check the fight before like you could in classic and tag. Once you face them and had a problem with them, then you'll tend to remember them the next time. But that's how we learn. We learn from experiences. Exactly. The problem is, even after going to the Index and reading so many Mythicals kits, many of them having so many abilities, and, and that's just in one form, it's hard to keep track of it. And then you, they just ignore your stats anyway, so even if you know what they do, it's not like you can do anything to them. It feels like they shouldn't even be in the game, and RSL would be better balanced in the game without Mythicals. That's easy to say, but I guarantee you, if these guys started pulling Mythicals, they wouldn't be complaining. The horizon tries, but it's just not as kind on the eye.